Welcome back. In this tutorial, I will focus on design insights and design impact and show you how to turn analytics and design complexity into actionable data, reveal code findings that need to be addressed before modernization may begin. In the status dashboard, as well as in the usage section, we have already come across design impact and design complexity metrics. To understand the huge value of these metrics, let's dive deeper into the topic and we'll start by taking a closer look at the design impact. Design impact is a categorization of seven levels from very low to exceptional that indicate the impact of redesigning or migrating an application. The design impact score is calculated from three main sources, complexity, insights, and similarity. The idea being it should help us determine how to best address topics like modernization and migration. Design complexity is based on the magnitude of design elements and the amount of source code in these elements. Design insights are combinations of certain patterns, rule sets, occurring in the source code. Design similarities analysis identifies how much alike a database is to all other analyzed databases. To get an overview about the design complexity, let's start by looking at the design section by navigating to design complexity. The complexity view lists the overall totals of all analyzed designs of our focus databases in our application landscape. The absolute number of focus databases analyzed, which is also provided in the status dashboard, is 345. The total number of lines of code used, at this point more than 9 million lines, as well as the average complexity index and the highest complexity index, which are both calculated by application insights. In our scenario, the average index is 54,000 and the highest index is 847,000 which means the highest complexity value is 15 times as high as the average value. The average and highest complexity index gives us an idea of the distribution of complexity. By looking at a low, an average, or a high complexity database, we can get an impression of time and effort needed for modernization, and we can give ourselves a starting point to do calculations for planning and investment. Combining this with other information like usage allows us to extrapolate that over our entire environment. Furthermore, this view gives us insights into the prevalence of the various coding languages and design elements used. Within the donut chart on the lower left side, we can see that almost most of the coding has been done in formulas and Lotus script. Next to the donut chart, we can see a bar chart which compares the number of design elements and the number of code lines represented by those design elements. Most of the design elements can be found in views, followed by forms, agents, etc. An interesting fact in this scenario is that a compelling majority of lines of code can be found in views. In comparison to the other designs, it is really disproportionate. This would be even more exciting when we look at possible savings if a certain percentage of views is not used. In such a case, a corresponding amount of code would not need to be modernized since views are not used. At the bottom of the dashboard, we see a distribution overview of all databases with a complexity index of high, very high, and exceptional. Here, one can very clearly see which applications apparently contain a lot of investment and how much the individual databases differ from one another in terms of complexity. Hence, this chart is also a good reference point to do calculations for planning and investment. Now, let's continue with looking at Design Insight. The Insights dashboard gives us information about the design patterns found containing compatibility and dependency insights based on the rule sets. A finding is a specific code element or combination of code elements that were found and are listed as something that requires consideration in case of, for example, modernization. Think of things like dependencies on other databases, operating system, or rich client but also code, code not supported on the web, and mail dependencies. Precise information on the rule sets and categories is described in the user guide, which is available for download on the PAN Agenda homepage. Similar to the complexity dashboard, the upper part of the dashboard reveals information about how many database instances have been analyzed with regards to insights, how many of these database instances insights were found here, both times it's 15. The total number of different insights found, 261. And finally, what is the highest insight score? In this scenario, 168,000. Please note that not every single focus database contains findings. Subsequently, the numbers shown here will possibly represent just a subset of the analyzed focus databases revealed in the status dashboard. Also, please note that the calculation of the insight score is different to the calculation of the complexity score. 
The 261 different findings are listed in the below design insights by rule set and findings chart. For each use, the findings are grouped into different rule set categories. For instance, web design findings, code findings, mail findings, or others. The color of each finding indicates its relative impact depending on the severity, dark red being severe and green being low. To get detailed results on the findings in a certain category, simply move your mouse over the desired category. By clicking on the category, it is also possible to zoom into the category. The distribution of the six rule set categories, as well as the findings within them, give us an insight into the type of potential roadblocks or focus areas and let us overcome them prior to design changes. Now that we have a good understanding of Application Insight's powerful and helpful dashboards and analytics, it's time to take a closer look at the final section, the Catalog section. The Catalog section is the place where we get the deep dive information about a specific database instance, both in terms of usage as well as design. To open up the Catalog, please select Catalog in the Navigation menu. The Catalog lists all instances our license entitles us to access for analysis. We can sort, filter, and find database instances according to our criteria. As this list displays instances, it is possible to see several instances of the same replica set. In general, two different views are available. The Columns option in the top right allows us to select between the default column set and the usage column set. Now, let's assume we would like to get a list of database instances which currently have the highest usage ranking. Then, simply click on the header in the column Usage Rank to sort the list. This list returns the top database instances within a second. Please note that database instances might be omitted due to license scope reasons. Filtering is also as easy as it gets. Let's say we are looking for a list of the database instances that have the highest design impact score and the highest usage ranking. Activate the filter by clicking the funnel icon on top. In the column Impact Score, select Exceptional and Very High. It is also possible to multi-select values by keeping the Control key or Shift key pressed during selection. If required, click on the header in the column Usage Rank again to sort the list. So, here's the list of database instances with a high impact score sorted by their current usage ranking. Contact is the database instance with the highest design impact score and the highest usage ranking. If we would like to clear a filter, we will use the stop sign icon next to the funnel icon. However, we will not deactivate the filter and dive a little deeper into the database instance details to better determine the business value of this particular instance. To do so, just click on the instance name and we will be immediately forwarded to the Instance Details dashboard. Upon opening the database instance details, we will be presented with a header that contains general information about this specific instance. Keep in mind that if a database has multiple instances in its replica set, each of them will be analyzed and classified separately. Therefore, the usage, design, and ranking information portrayed in the top is all instance-based. From left to right, we see the instance details including the replica ID, if available, the number of active users, the web or client usage rating, the usage rank and the design rank. For better comparability, all this information is standardized to 90 days. Furthermore, we see the design complexity impact score and if this database instance is a focus database or not. Below, we will see different tabs depending on the database instance selected and due to license scope. In this situation, we see the following tabs. The Application tab. Within the Application tab, we get lots of details about the database itself, like size, server, replica, and template information, as well as replica and access control list details. The Usage tab. The Usage tab gives us specific information about how this specific database instance is being used. It shows us the number of user days activity that is taking place in the instance, the number of active users per period, the amount of data being uploaded or written versus downloaded or read, and the number of web and client sessions. Having this insight can help us determine whether a specific instance needs to remain a separate replica or could be consolidated or removed. The Design Complexity tab. The Design Complexity tab gives us insights into the several design elements of the database. Clicking on every single one, we see the totals for each type of element being used, how many of them contain code, and what type of code, as well as subsidiary elements like fields, subforms, or others. 
Please note, this tab is only visible if a design analysis was performed on the database and if it is in the scope. And finally, the Design Insights tab. This tab helps us identify potential problems and challenges in the code of our database instance design. Based on a predetermined list of criteria or rule sets, certain occurrences or combinations of occurrences in our code are highlighted that could require attention in case of optimization, modernization, or migration. Please note that Design Insights are also only available if a design analysis was performed on the database, if design findings were found, and if it is in the scope. Each rule set, like web design, mail dependencies, or specific code findings can be double-clicked and will list the type of findings in this category and the number of occurrences in the code. Each finding criteria has a weight that helps to identify the potential risk of the finding. Findings classified as more high risk are shown in red, while less significant findings are indicated in green, allowing us to organize and prioritize our actions effectively. The green findings like formulas or JavaScript are rather insignificant. The red ones indicate problems in that particular category. One example here is code not supported on the web. If we want to plan to make our applications accessible via web browsers, we may want to know what code is not supported on the web. The more such issues are found, the more attention is required. In this case, 420 elements are affected. Each finding lists the design element type, design element name, and the action in which the code is located. Besides seeing the code elements that could be problematic, we also see in how many other applications the same code is being used. This allows us to plan more efficiently and replace code across our platform as we go. To view the affected code, simply click on the element block. The code will appear in the right-hand window. The affected code lines are highlighted in yellow. Use the Previous and Next buttons on the top of the code window to easily navigate it to the affected code lines. If available, their location is also visible in the right scroll bar for easy navigation. For instance, when we take a look at the first element underneath Code Interacting with Notes Client, Design Insights provides you with the following benefits. Find the optimal strategy for your applications. Reduce the effort, cost, and risk associated with modernizing your applications. Increase competitive agility by improving your ability to leverage existing assets in new ways and into modern environments. Discover, preserve, and reuse the intellectual property hidden in the existing application assets. You're now ready to start all on your own. If you have any questions, just visit us at panagenda.com. Thanks for watching.